Hello and welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we're going to change things up a tiny bit today. No more flowers in a pot or a container. I'm sure you're thrilled. Um, this time we're going to do this cute little scene with the log and a bird and some flowers around it just sitting in a little field. Uh, you only need four stamps for this project. Uh, so it should be a pretty quick one. So let's get started. Um, the stamps we'll need for this are from the foliage set, the original foliage set. We're going to use our tiny little grasses again. You can also use these slightly bigger grasses if you'd like. Um, in flower set number two, we're going to use these long stem little bunch over here. In the sitting places set, we're going to use the long log. And then in the bird set, we're going to use this cute little guy with his tail going off to the right. So to begin, we're doing only a three by three painting again, or I'm sorry, three and a half by three and a half um, painting this time. So nothing too big. And then we'll be using um, the colors olive green, number 15, number 86, African violet, um, number 17, steel blue, number 845, sepia, and number 89, persimmon. Again, I use the Marvy La Plume 2 markers. Um, you can also use Tombows if that's what you have. All right, so to begin, we're going to start with our log and 45 sepia. So will we, um, you will color the entire log. And then press this down a little below center. Doesn't have to be too far. Um, And there we have it. And now we'll pull the color from the lines. So dip your brush in water, remember to pinch it off. And then I'm gonna drag the color below each of the lines. So kind of down underneath them all. This part of the log, the bottom part, will be the darkest. So we will go back in and add um, quite a bit of paint down in that area. Since, you know, that's like kind of against the ground and whatnot. Try not to go over your lines too much. I know with this one with such tiny little details, it could be kind of difficult. Um, you can always use the thin tip of your marker and kind of draw them back in if, if they kind of disappear too much on you. Okay, so there's the water or the color drawn out. So now on my palette, I have 45 sepia already on here. So now I'm just going to go back, back in layers and just kind of paint in some of the brown. Again, making it darker on the, near the bottom, a little bit lighter on top for some highlights. Once it dries, I'm going to go back over it, especially down here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my 45 sepia and my African violet, and we're going to, I'm going to mix these two together get more of like a gray color. I'm going to go back and that way I add like the deeper shade yet. Kind of come up a little bit and add it, you know, anywhere that you think would be a little darker on it. Make it so the bark kind of has some texture. Make it slightly 
slightly darker with a little bit more African violet. So again with watercolor you want to just keep layering until you get your desired um, color, so your desired value of your color. I know it's sometimes hard, you want to just go on in and just paint, but give it a minute. <laughs> Um, they dry pretty pretty quickly, so I'm just going to go back again with just the sepia and try to get that a little darker. Okay. A little bit more over here. See, I see right here, um, I kind of lost my lines of the spiral at the end of the log. So um, when this is completely dry, I will just go back with my fine tip and um, add that back in. No big deal, nothing to stress about. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. So next we're gonna add our little bird to the end over here. And to do this, we actually need our positioner. So with your positioner, you use this part of the block and press your uh, the thin piece up into the corner. So for the bird, I'm going to do um, first sepia. and then color it with the African Violet. Now I'll warn you, I'm still not great at birds, but we're adding one in here. I gotta practice too, right? Okay, so now make sure your this little piece is pressed up into the corner, and then I'm gonna take my stamp, make sure it's lined up in the corner, and press it down onto that piece. So now, my little bird is on my plexi. So now I use this to figure out where I want him to sit exactly. Do I want him in more on the log? Want him closer to the edge? Where do I want him to sit? So I'm going to be like, you know, I kind of want him right there. So now I put my positioner back in place. I'm going to hold this down, put that in place, move that. I'm just going to give a little huff onto my stamp and press down my bird. And now he is exactly where I want him to sit. So now again, we're gonna carefully pull the colors out of the lines of him. He's so small that it's easy to just kind of, I got a little too much water in my brush there. So it's easy to accidentally um, pull out too much and kind of overwhelm him. So, I'm gonna try to leave his belly a little more um, white along with the bottom of his face and then the tip of his wing. So I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. And my log is dry right now, so I'm gonna go back while he kind of dries for a second with a thin tip of my sepia. And here's where I will now kind of go back in and add these lines back into the log over here. So I'm gonna even just kind of come across the bottom, go over that one right there. Let's see, there's a little knot over here I'm gonna add. There was a hole, like a knot hole right there. I'm gonna make it darker. Make this little area a little bit darker into that. And if you want, like on this one, I freehanded like another little knot on the log. If you want, you can do that. I'm just gonna add a couple more lines just to kind of give it a little more texture and detail. If you want, you can, you know, add another little knot, cause why not? Why not add a knot? <laughs> okay. So there we go. So now you can kind of see more of the line. So then after I did this, if I wanted to, I can go back and make this a little darker or leave it however you want. 
So now for the bird, I'm gonna take more of my African violet and kind of come back in here and carefully kind of make him a little darker in certain spots. Don't want to lose all the detail. So I'm going to be careful around his eye. Okay, and you can go back. with your marker when it's dry. I'm gonna give him a minute, I think, before I go back on it. So while he dries, we're gonna move on to our grasses. So we're just gonna do the little grasses. Again, you can use the slightly smaller ones. We're just gonna do the uh, olive green. We use this one a lot for the grass color. And then just stamp it a couple times. Make it so your log is kind of nestled in the grass. No, it's out in the field. Gotta come up a little bit here. Add as much, as little, whatever you want here. I kind of like to spread my blades around a little bit if I'm just doing like it's in a field to give it more texture. So there's that, and now on my palette, I have a little bit more green. So after I now drag the color up and out, come up over the log. So right there, I didn't pinch off enough water, so now I'm just going to kind of drag some of that down. But that's okay. Makes it more unique. Okay, so now I have a little bit more pet color in my palette, where I'm just going to kind of add a little bit. Um, just to kind of fill in slightly. I don't want to like do it all the way. I just kind of make the grass a little deeper here. And create a shadow under the logs. Take a little bit of my African violet, make the shadow. Okay. So now we're gonna go back to the, our little bird friend here. And I'm gonna take the thin end of my African violet. I'm gonna darken in his little eyeball. We're gonna darken his beak. He does have another eye over there, it's just kinda hard to tell. And then I'm gonna go over his wing kind of accidentally lost some of those lines. And then I like to add a couple extra lines in his tail for like the feathers. I'm gonna go across his belly, a little bit on his head. Okay. And you know, I think I'm gonna leave Mr. Bird alone. If I do anything, I'm just gonna add a little bit of darkness under here. But I don't want to mess my little bird friend up. Okay. So, we are on to our last stamp, which is the flowers. So, we're going to use two colors. We're going to use the olive green on the stems. And then the persimmon 89 on the petals. And to stamp these, we actually need our trusty post-it tape. And we're just going to kind of tape. Let me tear that. We're going to tape off right here by the by the log. Kind of come this way. I don't want to um, 
had my flower, I want my flowers tucked behind the log. So there's my post-it tape. And now I'm just gonna stamp down where they kind of go over the, where it would go like over the log, but it looks like it's behind it. So I just stamped a couple times. And now I'm gonna re-ink. And then I'm gonna add a little group over here into the grass. Maybe I'm gonna sneak, let's see if I can sneak one or two little blooms right by the bird. Okay, so I'll peel this off. And so there, now my, my um, flowers are tucked behind the log. So we're gonna pinch off the brush and you're just gonna dab at the petals. We're not gonna um, brush them don't want them to go away. You just want to touch it, kind of bring up the color of the red. You can always extend them a little bit. And then your leaf or stems don't really need it, but you can at least like touch kind of where the stem, or I'm sorry, the leaves are to kind of soften those a little bit. Okay. So you don't have to do this part, but I like to do it. So I'm going to take the small tip and I'm just going to kind of add some dots into the grass. Kind of randomly here and there, kind of look like little blooms. And then I like to go back on my blooms themselves and kind of just near the stem where they would be like dark or underneath or wherever and just kind of add a, like a little dot of the color. I just think it adds just a little bit more, especially on some that are lighter when they have like a little dark spot. And I'm not going to touch them with water. I'm going to leave that. I am going to touch the ones on the grass though with water, just to kind of blend them out a little bit. So that again, you'll just kind of dab through. And there we go. And last thing we need to do Add some steel blue to your palette, and we just have the sky left. Um, play around with this one. Change the color of the bird, change the color of the flowers. Whatever you want to do. Again, this is only a, a three and a half by three and a half painting. You could probably make it slightly smaller if you want. up to you. Um, I'm not going to go in between all those flowers. We're not going to risk that. I don't want to touch my red and even with my bird. I'm going to be real careful. You don't even have to add as much sky as I'm doing. You can just do like a small little section and just so you have like the illusion of the sky. Like people know, okay, I see a little bit of sky. It's outside. I see grass. Like you don't need to go so extreme. I for some reason like it. I like to make kind of more of a square. <laughs> um, real quick, I'm gonna add a little bit more green down here. darker under the log. Alright, let me see. I'm going to take a little more sepia, I think, and try to get my log just a little darker down here. And there you have it. A sign and date. And there it is. Small, quick little four stamp painting. Keep it for yourself. Give it to a friend. Make it into a card. Yeah, 
easy as, easy as that. Have an awesome day. Bye.